Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the first one that we starred, which is on the second page, number one. Um, and so for that one, part A asks to write down the coordinates of A, and we talked about um, how to find the X coordinate. And the way that you find the X coordinate is to take four pi over three, which is the place where it crosses the X axis minus zero and divided by two. So to find the midpoint. So that would be equal to four pi over six, which is the same thing as two pi over three. And the way we find our Y coordinate would be um, one, which is our amplitude plus C, how much or however much we shifted the equation up. So um, for the second part, it asks us to find k and to find c. Um, so in order to find k, the first thing you need to know is the x coordinate of the maximum on just the original sign of x graph. Um, and so it has a max at um, x equals pi over 2 because the value there would be one. Um, and since it has a maximum at pi over two, which I'm just gonna rewrite as three pi over six. And now this function, um, the new function has one at four pi over six. This means that we had a horizontal shift to the right of pi over six, um, which means that our k is pi over six. Um, and then in order to find our c coordinate, um, you would plug in, um, so what I'm looking at is where, um, if we were to plug in zero to this equation, um, so we have sine of um, zero minus k, which we know is pi over six um, plus c. And uh, so this would be sine of negative pi over six plus c, um, which if you know your unit circle, you know that this would be, um, sine of pi over six is equal to negative one half. Um, now, what I'm gonna set this equal to is if we had just plugged in the regular um, sine of zero, um, because, or sorry, this value, when we plug in um, zero on this graph, it tells us, um, since it intercepts at the origin, the coordinate would be zero, zero which means that my C is equal to one half. Um, so that's part A. Okay, and then for 1B, um, the question asks us to find all of the zeros in the function from on the interval from negative four pi to zero. Um, and so what I know, um, is that the intervals will stay the same. So if you notice where it intersects now is four pi over three and two pi. Um, so that means that there will be one, um, the next one would be the smaller interval. So I'm finding the distance between two pi and four pi over three, which is two pi over three. But of course, since we're moving to the left, it would be negative two pi over three. Um, we would also have, um, let's see, negative two pi over three, uh, negative two pi. Again, I'm just moving now four pi over three, and then I'd move two pi over three would be negative 10, whoops, sorry, negative 10 pi over three, and then we're gonna move again, and so the last one would be at negative four pi. Um, oh, and also zero because it does intersect there and it says to include zero. 
So um, really, I just found those intervals and then I alternated every single time. So there's an interval of four pi over three and an interval of two pi over three. And so you just alternate every single time working backwards. Um, so if you need a sketch, so right now the graph looks like this and it has a small one. So then it means small one, big one, small one, et cetera, so on and so forth. Um, so this interval here would be two pi over three um, from here to here. And then from here to here is four pi over three. So the interval just alternates blue, green, blue, green between the X intercepts. So you just have to work backwards. Okay, and then for one C, um, it asks us to find the, um, considering the equation, write down the number of solutions from zero to nine pi. Um, so since K is between negative one half and zero, um, so on our graph, um, I know that this minimum value here is negative one half um, and between zero and we don't include those values, it's just between those. So anywhere it hits between here and here would have two solutions. Um, and since our um, period here is two pi, that means that for every two pi, there are two solutions. And so since we have two solutions here, um, if we take nine pi and divide it by two pi, that means we have four different periods. So if we have four periods, then that means we have eight solutions. Okay, so then finally for um, the last part, it asks us to find this, um, given that the smallest positive solution is at alpha, write the next two solutions. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, um, that means that this one right here would be at alpha. Um, so in order to find the distance between those two points, um, it's going to be, um, this distance away. So we would take two pi minus four pi over three and divide it by two, which is equal to two pi over six, which simplifies to be pi over three. Um, so this next one would be alpha plus pi over three. And the next one would happen in the next period. So that would be this first alpha plus two pi. So those are our next two solutions. Um, okay, so on that same page, we also didn't go over um, 2C. Um, and so looking at that one, um, what we know is that um, if you were to take the value of cosine of pi over two minus A, um, this is the same thing as sine of A. And the reason why I know this is because um, when you have pi over two would be here on your graph, on your unit circle. And so if you do pi over two minus A, um, it would give you the opposite. So if you had, for example, pi over six, if you were to do pi over two minus pi over six, you would get pi over three. And keep in mind that the coordinates for these points are just in the opposite order. Um, and this one would be square root three over two comma one half. So really, um, since the first one is cosine and the second one is sine, um, we're just flipping that. Um, so the cosine of pi over six is the same thing as the
the sine of pi over three. Um, so since we're able to rewrite that one, we can apply the same thing to sine of pi over two minus a is equal to cosine of a. And they gave us um, these values in the given part of the problem. So this one would be equal to s, and this one would be equal to c. Um, so that's part one. And then part two says, hints show that tangent of pi over two minus a is equal to one over tangent of a. So to start, we have, um, we can rewrite this as sine of pi over two minus a divided by cosine of pi over two minus a. Um, and using what we just found, this is the same thing as cosine of a divided by sine of a, which is the same thing as cotangent of a, which is the same thing as one over tangent of a. And there we got our proof. Um, so then the next step um, for part three says, uh, given that tangent of a um, plus tangent of pi over two minus a is equal to four over the square root of three, find all the possible values of tangent of a. Um, so what I'm going to do is take the pieces that we already know. So tangent of a um, is the same thing as c divided by s or um, sine of cosine of a um, divided by sine of a um, plus s divided by c is equal to four over square root three. And I'm just going to get these, um, I'm going to multiply to get the same denominator. And so you end up with c squared plus s squared um, divided by sc is equal to 4 over square root 3. And if you remember um, cosine squared plus sine squared um, by the Pythagorean identity is 1. So you have 1 over sc is equal to 4 over square root 3. Um, and if we use the reciprocal, SC is equal to square root of three divided by four, um, which means that um, all of these values um, for S and C are, um, would be one half, sorry, would be one half and square root of three over two in any order, and they're also all plus or minus, um, which means that our, um, our tangent value, if we were to, to divide them, we would have square root of three or um, square root of three divided by three. So any of those would work. So those would be the possible values of tangent of a. Um, and then it asks us to find the values um, between 0 and 2 pi where this would be true. And so those values would be um, pi over 3 or pi over 6. And that's that one for that page. Um, the other one, another one that we skipped was on the third page, and it was just the second part, so we're looking at 8b, um, but I'll go ahead and walk through 8a and 8b as well. Um, so for 8a, we have that the area of BDCP is equal to the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle. So that would be equal to one half pi over two um, because the angle is 90 degrees and we have to write it in terms of radians. So that would be pi over two r squared minus one half r squared sine of pi over two because we have to use um, the area of a triangle. Um, 
And so this would be the same thing as um, pi over four times two squared minus um, one half times two squared. So this would be pi over four times four, which is just pi minus uh, one half times four, which is two. So that would be part A. Um, for part B, um, we're looking for the area of the shaded region. Um, and that shaded region would be equal to um, the area of the sector minus the area of BDCP, which is what we just found. Um, and so the way to find the area of the sector, um, it is 180 degrees, which would normally mean that our angle is pi, but since um, when you're solving that, that turns, um, what, what you end up with is you have to do um, two times one half pi over two. Um, I did two 90 degree sectors um, instead, and this would be BP squared because that's the, the radius of the larger circle um, minus our answer from the last question, which was pi minus two. So what we end up with is um, two times pi over four, and we found BP in the last one. Again, it's just the missing side of the triangle divided by two, which would be two square root two divided by two, which is the square root of two, and when you square that, you get two. Um, and then we would subtract pi and then add two. I just distributed the negative there. So then we get pi minus pi plus two, which the pi's cancel and you're just left that the area is two. The last question um, we didn't get to was um, the last question on the fourth page. Um, so that's question number three. And it wants us to show that the area of the minor segment is one half pi r squared um, times theta minus sine of theta. And remember that when you have something like this, you just have to show all of the steps because they already gave you the answer. So the area of the minor segment would be equal to the area of the major minus the area of the triangle. Um, so the equation for that, the equation for the area of the major would be one half theta r squared um, minus the area of the triangle, which the area of the triangle would be one half r squared times sine theta. And then um, we can pull out our common multipliers and that would be one half, um, uh, one half r squared. And when you pull that out, you're left with theta minus sine theta. And that's what they wanted us to find, so we're done. Um, so that's part A. And then part B says to find the area of the major sector. Um, so the area of the major sector um, would be equal to 1 half theta r squared. Um, but our theta now, instead of being the small theta that they gave us, it's the entire circle minus that angle. And so the entire circle would be 2 pi minus theta. So that would be part B for the area of the major sector. And then part C says, given that the ratio of the area of the blue region to the area of the pink region is one to two, show that sine of theta is equal to three halves theta minus pi. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up with, um, we have one half times two pi minus theta r squared, which is the area of the pink region that we just found. Um, and what they told us is that is equal to two times the area of the smaller region, which we found that as well to be one half r squared 
times uh, theta minus sine theta, um, which I'm going to go ahead and distribute the one half. We would have pi minus one half theta r squared is equal to r squared minus, um, sorry, r squared times uh, theta minus sine theta. So then we have, um, I'm going to divide by r squared on, um, sorry, this is here. Um, we're going to factor out the r squared um, on both sides, divide by r squared on both sides, and we end up getting pi minus 1 half theta is equal to theta minus sine theta. And then uh, we know that the equation wants us to get sine theta on one side, so I'm just gonna move our equation around. So we have sine theta is equal to theta minus pi plus one half theta. And then we have uh, theta plus one half theta adding like terms on both sides. So we end up with this being equal to three halves theta minus pi, which is what they wanted us to get, so we're done. Um, the last step, part D, is to find the value of theta. Um, and so uh, what, what I started with is that um, sine of theta would be equal to negative three halves theta because if you have three halves theta minus pi, um, it would just take it around uh, 180 degrees or half of the unit circle, which means it would be the same angle but negative. So we have sine of theta is equal to negative three halves theta, and the only um, the only angle that will satisfy this because every other angle involves pi. Um, which means that on the left-hand side, you would end up with a number, and on the right-hand side, you would end up with something in terms of pi. So the only time where this works is when theta is equal to zero, because then you end up getting zero equals zero, and that's the only time that the statement can be true. Um, so that's that.